And good evening everybody, hello and welcome, thank you very much for joining me this evening. Uh, something very special, uh, tonight is the start of the Gaming Rules coverage for Perseverance Castaway Chronicles. I've got some videos for this coming next week, but tonight I'm doing a live Q&A with two of the designers. Uh, so we have Mr Victor Peter and Mr Richard Amman. Good evening. Hello, good hey, evening. everyone. Thanks thank you very much. Me. No, no, thank you, for, thank you for joining me. So yeah, we're going to be doing a live Q&A tonight. Uh, I've got a few questions that I've thought of in advance, but otherwise I'm going to be looking to the chat uh, for any other questions. So if you have any questions in the chat, hang fire for the moment, keep them in your mind because otherwise I'm going to miss them. Uh, and we're going to start off with just a few of my own and then, and then we'll look at the chat. So, um, for those people who don't know, you are Mind Clash Games. That part of it at least, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now who else is in Mind Clash Games? It's, it's not just you two, is it? No, no, it's not just us. Uh, currently, uh, there are eight people in the core team. Uh, oh, okay. it's, it's the two of us. And we have Ville, uh, who is currently our main graphic designer and art director. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the, the three of us started the business a uh, couple of years ago, and we've expanded since. Uh, we have Fritzi, uh, who is our project manager and crea uh, creative uh, guy. We have uh, Dorka, uh, who is my, our community manager. And we have Bolash, who is responsible for uh, uh, localizations and also for uh, manufacturing. And yeah, we also have uh, Robin, who is our lead play tester. And we, all, we, we have Ian, who is responsible for, for, the, com uh, for the replacements and the customer service stuff. Right. So when Mindclash started, it was just the three of you, but you've obviously grown and expanded. Yes, that's right. Cool. Right. Okay. So let's... Go to we the also first have question. some uh, illustrators oh, and graphic designers who we work on a regular basis, so they're also kind of uh, very closely related to us, and we consider them uh, also like part of my clash. Right. Uh, cool. Okay, so uh, let's start talking about the game. So first of all, just tell us a little bit about the game for anybody tuning in who knows nothing about it at all. Of course. So yeah, uh, perseverance. Actually, we can talk. We can start talking plural. Plural. Sorry, <laughs> because it's not an ex exaggeration to say that these are actually two games. Episode one right. and episode two are actual separate standalone games, um, and they basically tell the beginning of the story of shipwrecked survivors on a dinosaur island. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's the theme behind it. Uh, Richard is going to be able to tell you a lot more about it, uh, about the theme, because he is basically responsible for, for the verb building and, and the theme and the thematic integration of our games. And I, I can tell you a few words about, about the mechanics behind the game. Okay. Let's go with the theme, the theme first then, Richard. Sure. Okay. Okay. So uh, as I think Victor wrote in one of his uh, designer diaries that I'm kind of one of the uh, biggest fans of Jurassic Park, right. uh, which is kind of true. So I, I really like uh, the, the whole uh, ID and, and of course dinosaurs in general. And I, I actually uh, designed a game uh, about dinosaurs in uh, preliminary school, uh, sorry, preliminary school. So it was quite a while ago. And now this is like a dream coming true that we are working nice. on, on Perseverance. Uh, so when I realized that it's my idea to bring dinosaurs into the picture was okay for, for <laughs> Victor and the guys in the pro uh, project, then I, I got very excited. Also, I, I love uh, uh, adventure stories and mystery stories. So when, when I had these th three ingredients, dinosaurs, mystery and adventure, uh, uh, this kind of resulted this uh, idea of having uh, uh, this uh, luxury ocean liner getting stranded on this uh, mystery island where uh, dinosaurs are, are uh, around. Um, and there is also another mystery in uh, on the island, which I, I also, it's, it's a mystery how we got, got there. I mean, uh, yeah. that's something uh, we are not uh, just revealing right now. And uh, some of the mystery will only be revealed in later episodes. Uh, and I think that's one of the cool things about the theme that you don't really know what's happening or why it's happening, and it keeps you in in the theme. 
and you want to explore. Even if you're not playing for the first time, you really want to explore the island and, and uh, find out what, why these animals are here and, and how could we uh, change our relationship to them, for instance, and not just fight them all the time. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, we were kind of excited to see what's going to happen if we put all the modern society things, like what we, if, if, you're, if, you're take, if you take uh, an ocean liner, it's like a moving city or a floating city. So yeah. you have everything what we have in our modern society. And if you put it into a prehistoric uh, era, like a, an uninhabited island where uh, the main um, flora is, is like dinosaurs. And we, we really wanted to explore what would happen to a society having to uh, live there and start building a city there. So yeah, that's what we're doing here. And, and I hope that a lot of people are going to be excited to see this uh, happening. Okay, a couple of quick questions then. When is this set? And I'm getting the impression that this is set now in our time. Absolutely, it's yes. it's it's now. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's the ship is launching tomorrow, and by the time we get to uh, the Kickstarter launch, we are already on the island. So we right. we are we also we, we have like a pre campaign which is starting tomorrow. So if you want, you can follow our uh, follow us on the social media. So you can. Uh, follow someone who's a passenger on the ship and uh, what's happening to her and how she gets to this dino island. Uh, we, are, we are very excited to see uh, where this leads us. Okay, so there's a luxury liner leaving to go yes. on holiday tomorrow. Yeah, so exactly. essentially they are leaving for, for a standard Caribbean luxury cruise, right. but they, they end up caught in, in a very violent and very mysterious storm that yeah. sorts of um, and they sort of end up in another dimension, right? So they they actually got uh, capsized on this island, unable to to get home, unable to be found because they, the the island essentially doesn't exist, at least not in our world. Yeah. So their only choice is to actually settle down there, uh, do something about the dinosaurs, and and basically start building a society there. So right. yeah. Okay. Cool. Because obviously. Really start Point of the story. With, it, with, you know, with it being my birthday tomorrow, going on a luxury Caribbean cruise is exactly <laughs> the kind of thing that I was planning to do tomorrow. But maybe I won't now. Maybe I won't. Yeah. My, well, my second to join us on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> I might do. My second question for you, Richard. Um, did you watch the Lost TV series? Actually, I, ha I haven't. I only oh, right. watched a couple of uh, uh, episodes. Uh, but of course, that was. I mean. I was more inspired by the uh, reboot of the Tom Tomb Raider franchise, the first right, episode, yeah. um, and also like the classic stories, The Lost World, and I yeah. don't mean the Jurassic Park one, but uh, yeah. Sir the Arthur Conan Doyle one, yeah. yeah. So all those stories were very inspiring to me uh, as I grew up and also as an adult, so I, I, I'm, I'm so happy to be part of this project. Right. And, uh, Cool. So uh, I said I'd leave the questions in the chat till later on, but there's actually a couple that have just come in which are, which are relevant right now. Because you've mentioned that there's going to be stories and mysteries that you will find out during the game. How is that going to affect replayability of the game after you've explored it and you've found those mysteries? Um, actually, uh, when we talk about mysteries, we don't mean mysteries as in mysteries in, a, in an envelope hidden okay. behind hidden behind the insert or something like that. This is going to be an entirely non-legacy game, right? right. So, so uh, both, all the episodes uh, on their own and also the campaign that ties them together can basically be replayed over and over again. Right. Uh, but you do actually find out what's going on on the island and how you ended up here by the end of the whole storyline. Right, but that's not going to affect... The, the playing of the game, as you say, there's no boxes. That's, that's there's right. No... And even the right. campaign itself, the the story mode, so to say, that ties all these games together, can be replayed over and over again because the outcome is going to be different each time. Yeah. So. Okay. Excellent. Right. Yeah. Now. So the, when I talk about mystery, I meant like what you see now, and and we are going to be revealing most of the plot, uh, the story, uh, the plot points of the first two episodes, but we're right. not revealing what's going to happen in episode three and four. 
Yeah. So you, you still, you, you have some ideas where this is going to go, but you don't know. And when yeah. you play, you're going to have your own stories. That's what, that, that was a very important goal for us, that when you play, you are building your own story. And it's yes. not, yes. it's not, we haven't written a story for you. And then you, you sold the story and you don't care anymore. It's, it's going to be about your stories. And yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, uh, the feedback we heard a lot from from people playing Anachrony, that Anachrony is not a narrative game, but the mechanics and the whole settings actually give you the opportunity to tell yeah. your own story. Your own story, yeah. And yeah. we actually wanted to take that notion a bit further here in Perseverance. So what our, our essentially what our goal was is to tell tell stories with mechanisms and not not with actual narrative cards and and. Yeah. Uh, and journals and whatnot. So that's yeah. that's what we are we are doing here. Cool. So Richard's touched on the theme of the game. Let's go to you, Victor, and let's explain the core mechanisms within the game. Yeah. So so uh, the core mechanism uh, of the game is uh, dice placement, dice drafting, and dice placement. Okay. And the way uh, each episode works is that uh, this this uh, mechanism is with you for the whole saga. So you only need to learn it once. It right. does have a few evolutions over time, but this and a couple of other central mechanisms are basically uh, existing in all, all of the episodes. And this is, uh, like, what these episodes do is is uh, how you actually manage things within the city. Uh, so with dice placement, you are actually building settlements, you are, you are um, you're converting the specialists of the ship to your cause, you are collecting resources, you are influencing the ship's senior officers. So there's a lot, a lot to do within the framework of, of this mechanism. Right, right. But then there is the island too on the other side. And uh, since each game basically tells you a stage uh, of these survivors' lives uh, on their journey to become an actual society here uh, on this island, the way they interact with the island is different each time. So for example, and this, Mechanically, this is what's different about each episode, but this is so unique in each episode that it, it warrants, uh, like, it makes them a different game on their own. So right. they operate with the same core mechanisms, but the way you interact with the island is actually how it makes, it, uh, how it makes each game unique. So right. just an example, in the first episode, you just settle down, you crash your ship, there is no way home, there is chaos. And there is dinosaurs attacking you, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so what you have to do right away is uh, basically secure the people who are fleeing the ship, quickly build some walls, quickly mount some defenses, and actually secure this upstart little settlement uh, before the dinos are actually trampling you or or yeah. you. Mm. And once that's succe that, that's successful in episode one, you built a wall, you solidified your defenses. You settle down. You you have sort of like a hierarchy, and you are actually already over some sort some internal power struggles. Basically, that's when episode two uh, starts. So episode two is I think uh, Richard, it's about a year or two after episode one, right, or something like that, in time. Yeah, yeah. And then you already have your city. It's protected. It's uh, not flourishing, but it's functioning. And you realize that you need to expand and you need to discover the jungle surrounding you yeah. uh, so the way you build and develop your city uh, continues to work using these dice dra drafting mechanisms but the, di the dino defense uh, the way you interacted with the dinosaurs in episode one it's gone and now you are actually facing a map uh, the, the early map of the island your immediate surroundings which you can discover and uh, and also build outposts on the on the tiles that you just discovered. So it depicts right, right. the early expansion of the city. Okay. Okay. So, very very simple question that's coming on the chat is how many players does this game take, and is it a cooperative game or a competitive game? It's uh, it's not a cooperative game. So basically, right. you are playing. Uh, it's it's a one to four player game. So you mm -hmm. are you, we are going to have a solo mode for every episode. Yeah. And, uh, and and basically, uh, you are playing one of the four um, sort of wannabe leaders or upstart leaders of this society, and you have your rivals, right? So the victory points that you are collecting in this game are essentially followers. They, co they are called followers. So right. you're basically striving to be more popular, and you can achieve that by 
by uh, sort of swaying people uh, from the sheep to your cause and gathering support that way, uh, like through political machinations, or you can actually defend the, uh, them from the attacking dinosaurs and gain support that way. So there's this basically this this duality in every episode. Um, right. There's always multiple ways to gain followers. Okay, and uh, question in. Question in that actually came before that question, which is how is the solo play experience going to differ then from multiplayer? What's the objective of the solo experience? Um, so the solo experience was uh, developed by David and uh, mm -hmm. and John Albertson. They are partners in crime when it comes to uh, yeah. uh, developing solo modes. Uh, I haven't worked on that, worked on that personally. Uh, but I do know that uh, they are, uh, the solo opponents are essentially representing the dissenters in the society. Right. And you basically have to um, actually um, perform better than the dissenters do. Right, and okay. Cool. Okay, next question is for me. And that was about the title of the game. Why, why Perseverance and what does that translate to in the game? So first, when we were first uh, exploring how we could call this huge baby of ours, mm -hmm. uh, I was looking for a name that could be the name of the ship. So what you usually you have these cargo ships that have these kind of names like Endurance or something yep. like that. Uh, actually, that was the name of the ship in uh, the Tomb Raider saga, yep. in, in the, the final one. So I was looking for a similar world, uh, but then I realized it's it's not a cargo ship. It's a luxury ocean liner. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be the name of the ship, but still we have a connection uh, with the name of the ship, even today, uh, which is still an Easter egg. I don't want okay. to just spoil it right now. <laughs> so that's how we ended up with Perseverance. And it's it's we always strive for a one word title yeah. So that was one uh, goal we, we wanted to uh, achieve. And also the uh, subtitle uh, has something to do with the episodic concept. So right now we, we have the chronicles in the game, uh, which are even smaller parts of uh, uh, gameplays. Um, right. uh, maybe Victor has a better way to say it than just the episodes. So well, even but essentially chronicles are the games you play during the story mode. Yeah. Okay. So the cast, I, I I I think you you get the castaway part. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, I got that bit. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, the design of this game is not just you two, is it? There's actually is it five people that's been involved in it? Yes, that's true. That's true. All right. Let's go through them then and talk about their their contributions to the process. Sure. So I'm I'm sure. I, actually, I asked how we have how we pronounce the names uh, of the guys. So <laughs> maybe okay. I, I should tell it because I, I forgot to share it with Victor. So we have Thomas van der Hinste and Wolf Blanke, uh, who worked on the the first uh, the the game we started to work on together with David. Uh, yeah. And that, now I, I pass the word back to Victor. <laughs> yes, so uh, essentially when we say uh, that it, this is a group effort, we really mean that this is a group effort because it all started with uh, David Wolf's, David's Wolf's and Thomas's prototype that was presented to us, well, basically years ago. Right. Uh, so they are essentially... Almost four years ago. Yeah. yeah. They, are, they are responsible for, for the whole uh, dice drafting, dice placement core system that we still mm -hmm. have in the games today with a few alterations. Uh, but uh, we are the ones who eventually came up with the episodic, with, with, the, with first the theme and then with the episodic concept. And the reason to that was that because uh, the game that we had eventually with the new theme uh, was actually episode three. Okay. And, and episode three at that time, and even today, was a really, really, really complex and sprawling game that's sort of like the middle of a story. Right. And uh, we, at that time, and we still do want to work on our on the accessibility of our games, basically. And we felt that that game could use some improvements to to its accessibility. But then we also felt that thematically, it's like the middle of the story. So so we came up with this this crazy idea that okay, we should we should make 
prequel game, a prequel game to it, <laughs> sort of builds it up mechanically, uh, helps ease you into the rules, and also uh, basically sets the stage for 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 the theme that's already right. developed in episode three. And we realized that okay, that's cool, but uh, why not make two games? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, and uh, so that, that's that's how uh, the episodic concept was born. It was initially called Generations, by the way, because we we thought that um, each uh, each game would essentially describe the story of one generation of okay. the passengers of the ship. But we had some problems with the timing there, so so we settled with episodes because that's also where that's uh, uh, describing much better what's going yeah. on. So, so that's that's that that was our addition, and and ever, from that point on, uh, the five of us uh, was were working on on the episodes with uh, with the different involvement levels. Essentially, uh, we've been working more on episode one and two, and Thomas, David, and uh, and uh, Wolf are working on episode three and four. Uh, right. But but all of us are involved in every episode, and essentially our contribution here, like I said, they they brought the whole uh, core idea and the core mechanisms that yeah. we are build, still building on to this day. Uh, Richard uh, is a very important part of the design team because he is the one representing uh, the thematic aspect with an iron fist, I might add. Uh, right. so, so our games are, are thematic because of Richard, and I'm sort of in between, because I I am the one uh, I can work very well with David uh, on on the nitty gritty details of the design, but I also represent Richard's view to the to the whole design uh, group. So basically, yeah. basically, that's my my job to to sort of tie everything together in the right. design process. Okay, so yeah, I mean, perseverance it is all five of you working together. It isn't like one person with some other people. It is it is all five of you. Yes, that's right. that's true. Yeah, cool. Because um, you know, from because I know David Turty, I work with David a lot myself, and he's got a lot of involvement with with Mind Clash because he's done solo modes for some of your games, and obviously he's the designer of Anachrony and everything else. Yeah. But I think a lot of people out there, because David is the big shot designer, a lot of people think, oh yeah, he designed Tricarian and he designed Cerebri, and he's like, no, 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 he didn't. That that was you two. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. you two definitely deserve a lot more credit as designers um, than I, than I think people give you sometimes. So yeah, it's it's nice that um, you know David's always every time this gets mentioned on any Facebook group, David is always there saying, "No, I'm not the designer. It's these two. So you know. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, I mean that yeah, you're you're right about that, and and we 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 would really like to thank David that he. He keeps stressing this. I think that's that's because we are both designers and publishers at the same time. Yes. Yeah. And that's, and that's unusual. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are examples to that in the industry, but yeah, still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It gets difficult okay. to, for that reason. So, a few people have been asking in the chat about the episodes, and I think we've announced. I think it's four episodes, isn't it? Yes. The, eventually, we are planning four episodes. Yeah. Now, does that fourth episode is that the the end of the story? Yeah, in, in a way, yes. Right, okay. So, uh, the next question is, why, because obviously the Kickstarter is launching next week, mm -hmm. why are you launching episodes one and two together as part of the Kickstarter, and not just one? Oh, uh, yeah, well, okay, can I, you, you want me to answer that, Richard, or do you want to answer that? Well, I, I have a quick answer for that. Because okay. if we all, if we were to start with just episode one, people wouldn't really under, understand what we're doing here. So we figured if we wanted to uh, show you the episodic concept, then we at least need two episodes. Right. Uh, but to do all four episodes, e even the, the first two were such a huge effort yeah. on our end that we are just, I mean, uh, maybe one day we'll be big enough to do four <laughs> episodes the, for uh in advance uh, without the support of Kickstarter backers. But right now it's, it's the case that we, we are at the, uh, and actually it's it's not just that, it's, it's all about four episodes together would be, maybe it would be too much to process, yeah. to, to afford basically, because these are just like huge games. So it's like, you maybe you don't want to buy four games the first yeah. time. 
for for together. It's it's maybe it's better okay. if you just buy the first two episodes together. And because they are together, we can we can uh, we can make it more affordable as well. Yes. So yes. Yes. Yeah. That, there's definitely this this practical aspect to it as well that Richard mentioned that. Uh, even though the, the episodes do, do have unique mechanisms, they have uh, a lot of component overlap, most notably the 33 uh, custom dice, yeah. which you use in every episode. So if we were to make episode one and episode two in, into completely different, completely separate game, then we would have to duplicate the dice. Yeah. And, uh, and that would mean that we would not be able, like this, I think both, for, for for our backers, uh, this is the most uh, rational thing to do when it comes mm -hmm. to to making an affordable but also exciting and uh, and uh, luxurious product in a way. Okay, so when is episode three and four going to be out? Is it next year or the year after? Mm, it still depends on a lot of things. So okay. <laughs> I, I I think it's too early to commit to to any anything on that front. We are working uh, on it. As we speak, basically, like, yeah. like we are, it's an ongoing thing right now, and we would really like to launch the Kickstarter uh, quite shortly after episode one and two are delivered. Right. Okay. Cool. Now there was a question in the chat from earlier on that I missed. Let's just go back to this luxury cruise liner that's leaving tomorrow. Yes. Is there a magician on that ship? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> How could there not be a magician? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Right, okay, so another question in for me. Despite having very different themes, all Mind Clash games, when you look at it, you know that it's a game from Mind Clash games. It's got yeah. a certain look, it's got a certain feel, it's got a certain depth and a certain complexity. Um, so, I th you know, is it fair to say that if you like the other games from you, then you're going to like this one as well? Absolutely. That's yeah, uh, that's like what we work that, for. So. That we, okay. we try to, we try to keep our brand as consistent in that in that way as possible. And uh, yeah, basically, episode one, uh, I think it's a little bit below the complexity of the base anachrony. I think. Okay. And episode two. I think it's comparable to maybe Anachrony and an expansion, something like right. that. Okay. And then episode three is going to take it up a notch? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, are, we are still not going crazy with the complexity, but yeah. Ep episode okay. three is going to be a meaty one. <laughs> yeah, because that's some of the questions that I've actually been asked to today is, is where does this game fit? with regards to your other games in terms of complexity. So you, you've answered that one, is that episode one of Perseverance is actually going to be, uh, you know, not as complex as some of your other ones. So, yeah. It's yeah, but, but but we still, we didn't want to make it into a gateway game or a no. tutorial game or anything no. like that. And this is this is exactly why episode one was a huge effort to make. I mean, really, we, we, we started working on it like, okay, we, we know, Episode three. That's what that's what we are going towards. We we have a core mechanism. What could be difficult? Nothing. It's it's gonna be a piece of cake. Well, it really right. wasn't because <laughs> because we have to find the right balance between accessibility and depth. Um, all the while knowing that we are building up to a higher complexity later. So yeah, it, it, yeah. it was quite a challenge. Okay. Now I've got one more question for me, and then I'm going to go over to the chat. And that was in April of this year. The whole Mind Clash team were planning a, a visit to the UK. You were going to stay here at my house and we were going to work on Perseverance for a few days together and we were going to do some videos. Now that was in April and we're now July. Obviously that didn't happen because the yeah. world went crazy. How has the COVID-19 situation affected the development of this game apart from you weren't able to come and see me? Mm. Yeah, that Actually, was a huge letdown that we couldn't <laughs> see you in April. And, and well, I, the, I mean, the room is still ready yeah. for you. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean that the, the the whole process, like day by day, it was more and more and more unlikely. But it was so quite early yeah. in the COVID thing, yeah. so we we haven't lost hope for for quite a long time. So yeah, it was disappointing. But anyway. Uh, uh, in our workflow, home office has been had been a thing before that. So so we're working from home alone. It wasn't a big issue. Uh, mm -hmm. If anything, we've been working more 
uh, in these right. past months than, than when we were just having office hours. But also, obviously, playtesting went a lot slower because we had yeah. to use online platforms. Uh, online platforms are slower by definition. The, the, the saving grace is that you don't have to make the, the setup and tear down efforts. Yes. <laughs> but still, the play is, is, is quite a bit slack. Like, it's at least 50% more time to test on Tabletopia. Yeah. And even though I think we managed to, to work quite efficiently from home, this is part of the reason why the campaign was eventually postponed, because originally we wanted to launch it uh, in May, mm -hmm. and now we have to launch it in July. Yes. But seeing, seeing the campaigns launching in, in April and May, I in retrospect, I really don't mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Right. So that is all of the questions I think that I had for you. Um, I'm just checking the chat to see if there's any others uh, in there. There was a couple of comments earlier on from somebody who's a massive fan of yours from France and said that there isn't enough exposure for your games in, 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 in France. So I don't know how you can work on that. Uh... <laughs> Well, I think this campaign will sort of provide a solution to that. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, right, okay, well, let's let's now have a switch over to uh, the components, because I've got in front of me uh, the box. If we just turn this on, if this is going to work. Yes, there we go. Right, okay, so let's just move this out of the way. Uh, I've got a Ziploc bag there as well. So this is um, a prototype of Perseverance Chronicles. It says episode one and two on the box, but I believe this is just episode one. Is that right, what I've got here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. absolutely. Okay. So this is episode one. Now, obviously, bearing in mind, this is a prototype. So what you see here is not the finished product, um, but this is this is the kind of stuff that you're gonna get in episode one. So let's get, let's get the main board out first. And let's have a look at that. There oh, we go. Uh, don't, don't worry, there will be an insert in that box. Uh, there will be an insert, right. Now, the first thing I've noticed is this board is two-sided. Is mm -hmm. that for the number of players? Yeah, that's yes. right. Okay, so two to three players on this side, four players on the other side. Right, okay, so double-sided board. So this is this is the beach, uh, and this is the luxury, this is the cruise ship here, which doesn't look in a good, in a good state. Um, and just very briefly go over what, what we see on the board. Sure. So you, uh, if you remember me talking about uh, the dial placement mechanism, that's mm -hmm. that sort of the same in all episodes, and the way you interact with the, with the island, which is different in every episode, that you can see it very clearly because there is a horizontal split between the, between the two. So the bottom half yeah. is actually the city. Okay. Which, it's not going to stay the same, but uh, mechanically it is, or at least... Uh, very, very similar in, in all episodes, but the top half, the way you interact with the island, is going to change. So in episode one, on the bottom half, you are placing your dice, you are taking actions. Uh, each, each spot has uh, uh, spaces without icons, where you can place any die, and spaces that restricts icons, that uh, and there you can only place that icon. So yep. these dice essentially represent specialists on the ship that... Uh, that that can that excel in one task and not so much in the other. Right. Okay. And, and, and then um, on the top half, there there are actually the so-called so defense areas. If you if you check it out, if you look at the horizontal split, there's there are also four districts basically uh, in mm -hmm. the city, and each uh, district has their own separate defense area essentially. Right. So this is where the dinos will uh, sort of gather. These are. We call them dino sightings because whenever you place uh, a die, you are essentially making noises, uh, you are attracting dinos, you are seeing movement in the vegetation. And this yeah. is rep represented by placing dinos uh, on on, th on the top spots uh, after every die placing, essentially. Now, what are the dinos in these components? We're not going to go through all the components, but which ones are the dinos? Uh, not those. I think the dinos are still in the box, or at least I really hope. So. Oh yeah, yeah. We got a big, <laughs> big pack yeah. of dinos here. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we got these. Okay. So here we go. Lots and lots of dinos. Uh, yes, dinos. Uh, we we have two types of dinos um, mm -hmm. in episode one, and we will have one more in episode two. So three total, right. and more, more uh, uh, later on as we explore the island. 
Okay. Uh, for now, they are the so-called tramplers, which are these lumbering beasts who, who essentially, uh, true to their name, they basically trample, trample, trample your settlements if you, if you cannot defend them. Right. And there are the raptors, which are vicious beasts that can actually kill your soldiers that you are fighting with, mm -hmm. and uh, and also basically harm your settlements or the people in there rather if you let them in. Right. So what, what happens here is that you, you have the dinos gathering and in front of them there are wall slots so you can build wall segments uh, yeah. and then behind that there are the soldier slots where you can place light soldiers and heavy soldiers. This um, like an easy reference is uh, tower defense. If, if yeah. I, if if there was a gun to my head and I had to I had to call this mechanism somehow, I would call it <laughs> tower defense. But it's not exactly that, uh, because you actually can combine your forces with other players. You can you can uh, you can help them. Uh, you can build walls together. You can defend with your soldiers together. But eventually, you are going to get rewards individually, and you are still going to be competing for followers individually. So this is. Right. It's sort of like a semi-coop aspect, but you are not always inclined to defend because you might not just care about that particular uh, district all the time. Okay. So the, 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 the favorite part, mechanically, for me at least, uh, in this game is, is the motivations behind whether you want to defend or not, and if you do, where you want to defend and how. Okay. So there, is, there is this whole uh, motivation system behind that, and, and I think it's really neatly done. Um, that was the most challenging thing uh, about the design of episode one. We worked a lot on that to have the right amount of, I mean, at the right balance uh, for that. And I think we, we kind of nailed it at this point. Uh, yeah, but but yeah. it wasn't easy, for sure. Yeah, so, so what happens there is that when the dino slots are filled, the, the attack is actually triggered. So you have to check if your walls work. You have to check if your traps work because you can also place traps on uh, uh, on the dino slots that are still empty. Right. And if all, if there are still dinos remaining, then you have to fight uh, those dinos with your soldiers on the spot. Right. And if there are still dinos remaining, then the tramplers are going to destroy the settlements in, in the actual uh, uh, community areas on the lower. Dinos bomb here. Yeah. And, uh, and and if and, and if you let raptors in, then they are going to cost you followers right. uh, for your settlements. So one okay. removes your settlements, and the other removes um, basically followers for each settlement. Which and followers right. are victory points, so you really yeah. want to avoid that. Yeah. So we've obviously got the main board. We've got some extra boards here, which are going to be used to track certain things. Um, is this what is the di these dials for? Those are to measure the followers. Right. So and these you, are your victory points? Yes, yes. Followers yeah. are basically your victory point. Cool, right. So yeah, lots of stuff in here. And this is this is episode one, so we've obviously got player bags with stuff in. Now, obviously you sent me this a couple of weeks ago, but then this week, oh, this box arrived. <laughs> now, and we, I really, you mentioned this earlier on, that episode one and episode two are different games, okay? It isn't just... A second scenario this box what's in here is just as much stuff as is in episode one it is a completely separate game with a whole load of extra stuff now you mentioned that the dice are the same in both but other than that is it is it fair to say that all of these components are new uh, almost yeah the dice and and the little houses the that you see uh, yeah. yeah those two and the little houses, the so-called settlements, are also shared between one and two. Right. But apart from that, including the main board, those components are indeed separate. So yeah. And what you're good. showing showing us right now is basically it was really a mystery box until now because we never kind of showed anything from uh, episode two right. uh, apart from a sneak peek from the main board. So yeah. Uh, so that's, well, there we that's, go. There, 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 there is some for a reason. Yeah, there is some. Uh, there is some. Are you, are you okay if I show the board from episode two? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Let's get the board from episode two. Here, okay, you did. And we, 
uh, as we, we really wanted to show people a world that's evolving, we also decided to change the, the uh, soldier tiles and the resource tokens. So right. uh, in, in the first episode, you have different, even though they're kind of repre representing the same thing, because of the world is evolving, we wanted an immersive gameplay uh, uh, to, uh, to assure an immersive gameplay for people. So we decided to design new resources and, and new soldiers for episode two as well. Nice. There is a question in the chat to say, is there a thematic explanation why there are so many soldiers on this cruise ship? And I guess they weren't soldiers to start well, with. Absolutely, they were in soldiers, so that's why we have a whole zone that just for, for them to be trained uh, okay. to be soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So some so, we had some security guys on the ship, and they, they were the first soldiers, of course, but uh, after a while, it's going to have to be the passengers. Um, yeah. So, yeah, as you can see from this map, the bottom part is similar in that you have dice placement spots that do different things. But the upper part is very different. We now have hexes, uh, and we have a whole, yeah, a whole extra different set of rules and mechanisms, I guess, that go with this. So exactly, exactly. Cool. And if you if you take a look at the artwork, then you'll see that while we only see like small settlements and some tents on the beach, yeah. uh, here in episode two we already have like large complexes and yeah. uh, buildings and. Uh, settlement and, and large group of settlements so yeah that's also where we uh, wanted to show you that this world evolves also now the wall is finished so you can see on the artwork where yeah. the wall is the wall we're is not done. using the wall pieces anymore yeah nice and also in episode two we seem to have four of these these were in episode one yeah that's right uh, what you see there is the skill system. So in episode one, your leaders are sort of act, uh, emerging from the chaos, basically. Yeah. They don't really have a personality, or they do thematically, but not mechanically. Yeah. Uh, because like I said, we wanted to keep the complexity reasonable in episode one. But now that you know the base mechanisms, and you don't have to deal with learning all those, uh, we felt like uh, the leaders could use some customization. So right. what you see here is actually the skills that you can customize your leader with. Okay. There are quite a few, and uh, they're all associated with the ship's senior officers, which uh, you can see there, they're, those are these heads up in yeah. those bubbles. Uh, so basically, those are the, those are the uh, you're following their guidance, essentially. You are, you are right. their op operati operating agent, <laughs> so to say, and you also have to seek their favor. And seeking their favor is part of episode one as well because you have you can place influence cubes on them and there is this uh, uh, scoring mechanism that's based on mm -hmm. that uh, that follows the assembly but also uh, here you can also learn skills from them so whenever you influence them you can also pick one of the skills that they offer which helps in very which help in various aspects of the game right. and gives you a lot of uh, customizability and, and replayability yeah Cool, right. So yeah, we just wanted to get across how much stuff there was in the second box. Um, yeah, there, there is a lot of stuff. Right, let's switch back to there. There we go. Um, right, let's see what questions we've got else in the chat. What is the time jump from each episode? You mentioned that the time jump between episode one and two is one year. Is that going to be the Around same between two year. and three? No, there, there, there are different time jumps in, in okay. the different... Uh, between the different episodes. So right. what we really had to uh, take into consideration is the change in the game's world. So it, both mechanically and visually. So yeah. while episode one needs to represent really the first day, so they kind of had a couple of days or a week to build the stuff you're seeing on, 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 uh, on your main board, and yeah. you still want to have the feeling that okay they built some settlements and there were some improvements but they they couldn't start uh, building a city because the dinos uh, constantly attacked us right right so that's what the episode one main board represents but then we finished the wall and now we we can uh, start uh, raising uh, larger buildings 
and and uh, and finish um, the set settling down from the ship. So that that's why we needed the gap between the two games too, just to represent that that time uh, where they spent to build their city. Uh, and for episode three, we even need a bigger uh, jump because we we want them to uh, start uh, like using more materials from this new world. So right. while at first they're using stuff they brought from from our world, they start using the, the local materials like island resources right. of all, all the types, and in the end they're going to run out of, of fresh uh, modern resources because they, they're uh, all, all the, the, the even the plastic and metal materials start to rust and and, and they, they won't be able to use them anymore. Yeah. Uh, and then they, they will end up using all the island resources, which will uh, change the look uh, and, and uh, the look of their world and, and how they think and how they work. Right. Now, there's a couple of questions in the chat. One is in from Bruce. I mean, you mentioned that the decision to make it into four episodes was made quite early on. Bruce is asking, did you ever imagine you might just release it as one big game? Or was that never a, never an option? Uh, that, that was the original plan, to release episode three as one big game. Because right. episode three was a, was a very solid game on its own, and still is. Yeah. Uh, it, obviously, uh, having to... Having to having to tie these games into a series, it has design implications that sort of have a ripple yep. effect, and you have to change stuff around in later or earlier episodes. That yep. that's what makes it uh, quite challenging too, and takes a lot of time. But uh, but yeah, uh, essentially we had episode three, like I said, and it's still there. It's just uh, we just have to get there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, how long does it take to play? An episode. I assume the playtime for episode one and episode two are are the same. How long is the game? Mm, since uh, basically you have a set number of dice in each game, so mm -hmm. uh, you place all all the dice. Uh, there is an assembly, and uh, you you remove the dice from the board. You place them again, rinse and repeat three times, essentially two times for two players, and then the game is over. So it's quite. Uh, mm, it has. It, it it usually takes about two two ish hours, and maybe okay. episode two is a bit lo a bit a bit longer, something like two and a half. But okay. I think it's safe to say that it's it's around in the same ballpark, or maybe yeah. even a bit shorter as our previous games. Yeah. Okay. Um, and talking about the link between episode one and two, because you've said that each one is a standalone game. Mm -hmm. If you were to play episode one and then episode two. Is there anything that carries forward, or is episode two a fresh start? Yes, uh, I mean, there are two ways you can play these episodes. You can right. play them as a standalone game uh, with a blank slate every time. Yeah. There, there's a standalone rule set for that. But you can also play them in in the so-called story mode. Right. And in that mode, yes, there is there there are things that carry over. Uh, there are actually separate components for the story mode that don't show up in right. the standalone games. Okay. You are basically competing uh, for titles uh, each time. And the titles that you earned in the previous game are with you uh, in the next one. But you are also competing for the next set of titles. So you may be right. governor uh, this game because you won the previous one. Governor goes to the one who wins uh, a game, basically. Yeah. And you can claim the next uh, title. Uh, for example, you can claim Hunter if, if that's what you, that's the strategy you are pursuing in your right. given game. Uh, and these titles give you goals, and goals can earn you campaign points. Right. And campaign points can unlock you uh, bonuses that you can carry over for the whole story mode. Okay. Yeah, this was a question from Raphael, is, is what things stay from episode to episode. Now, my question is, uh, from, a, from a game development point of view, Having experienced other campaign-style games, how have you addressed the fact that one player might just do really well in episode one, and then suddenly you go into episode two and you're like, oh, we're starting episode two, and Victor's already doing really well. How, how do you address that in, in what potentially is quite a long campaign? Uh, since the game has, like, these are Euro games, right? They have yeah. 
they're a fairly tight economy, not not super tight, uh, but but fairly tight. So we had to be really really careful with with the starting stuff that we give yep. players. So you don't actually carry over what you earned, uh, like what what you had last game or, or anything anything like that. You can unlock some some starting bonuses with these with these bo uh, with these. Uh, with these campaign uh, bonuses that I mentioned earlier, yeah. But we've been really careful to have uh, catch-up mechanisms involved, and also uh, you not actually winning a game might mean that you are you, you lost that game, but you're still doing well in the campaign mode because okay. the two things are not always uh, mm, supporting each other. They yeah. usually yeah. do, but there are ways to to circumvent that. Yeah. Sometimes you have to figure out if if the campaign is more important to you or to right. win this game. Um, you might not be able to win it. So you if you you have to decide, you want to push for winning this game or maybe uh, compete in the campaign mode better because and and those are very very uh, exciting moments if you play yeah. the campaign. And, and as we already mentioned before, you're not transitioning from episode one to episode two right away. Yeah. So you get to play one episode multiple times. So it's it's not like oh, I my my game didn't work really well for the first time. I really want to give it another shot. You have the opportunity to do that while the game still evolves from one to the other. So it, it's it's. It's it's really really more like four episodes uh, in in the first box, but okay. we just call them chronicles. And yes. of course, the episodes are the bigger. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's a very important point that what what Richard raises is that in the story mode you're actually playing each episode twice. So you're playing episode one once, uh, and then you are playing it again with some very minor changes, and then you move over to to episode two, which uh, right. you also play twice. So the campaign mode consists of four, four, two, two and a half hour games, okay. and like I said, it's replayable. So once yes. you're done with it, you can just start over. Okay, so that's interesting. So you you don't just play each episode once in the story mode. You actually play episode one twice. Exactly. Yes. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, question in from Michael. He says, "Do you personally enjoy fantasy and dinosaurs?" Now, you might have missed the start of the conversation, uh, Michael, but yeah, Richard was telling us that Jurassic Park is one of his favourite films. So, obviously, you have a love for dinosaurs. Victor, what about you and dinosaurs? Mm, I'm more of a sci-fi sci guy myself. Okay. <laughs> but I don't... I, I like dinosaurs as well. Yeah, okay. I like them. Um, and, I, I like the fact, and, and I also like the fact that we're not uh, using... These standard dinosaurs. We are not having T Rexes and Stegosaurus. Yeah. And not. We are sort of. We sort of made our own dinosaurs. That's right. Are plausible, but clearly they are dinosaurs. But but you can't identify them with with the actual dinosaurs that existed. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Um, question in from Simon about the two player experience. Now I know you've probably play tested the game at all different player counts. How does the two player experience? Feel? How does it differ from the four-player experience? Mm, it, it works really well. There are uh, since mm, since there is majority scoring in the game. That's one mm -hmm. of the, one of the core mechanisms as well. Because like, I mentioned the assembly earlier very briefly. That's that's when the die pool runs out, and uh, so the core mechanism is core mechanism is actually the combination of dice placement and the area majority. Because when the dive pool runs out, you actually check all those districts one by one, the four that, that were adjacent uh, horizontally, and uh, you see you check who has the most colored pieces in each of them. Right. And this this um, this is a really interesting mechanism, but uh, we had to make some minor rule tweaks for it to work well yeah. in player games, yeah. but but it does really work well at this point. I still I I'm still gonna say that. Uh, I think the sweet spot is three players. Yeah, we played tons and tons of two-player games with Richard, right. and uh, I, they, they, it works really well. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Um, question in from Nick is: How is it that you are going to save the game after episode one? How are you going to make? Is it like a pad of paper, and you make notes on it? Yes, you basically you you the titles that I mentioned are actual tiles. So you, you right. get to keep the tile that you claimed uh, at the end of the last game. 
and you also have a, a campaign sheet yes that where you can right. where you can take notes of your achievements you can take notes of the of the, of the campaign points that you gained uh, and also the bonuses that you unlocked with those points right okay uh, another question in from Raphael. so here's the situation somebody backs it episode one and episode two uh, when is it likely to be delivered? Uh, I think we, well, I think we are expecting a September delivery, right, Richard? Yeah, next September. Next September, yeah. Of, of this year? No, 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 not oh. this year. Wish it was this year, but no, it's, it's yeah, next year. I was going to say, that's, that's crazy. How are you going to do that? So, September yeah, next actually, year. Actually, with a complex project like, this we we are looking at the very very long pre-production uh, yeah. phase and that that's what we had with our previous project uh the infinity box uh, of the anachrony uh game and and we are looking at the similar uh, uh, process uh, hopefully not uh i mean hopefully not having to count with situations like what we had to deal with this yeah. year so uh if you take those out of the equation, I think uh, September is a really, really safe uh, okay. estimation for us because we, we we prepared the games really well. So what we are doing now is to finish all the uh, rule books and all the uh, editing and all the playtesting to yep. be safe and sound, which yeah. we always... Basically, always basically what always prolongs these processes incre incredibly uh, is, is the book are the booklets basically yeah we now have uh, an episode one rule book an episode two rule book a solo rule book and also a campaign rule book so that's yeah. four rule books all have to be very very caref carefully written proofread uh, over and over again that that's that's always the one that takes the longest even yeah. if we have miniatures involved even if we have lots of custom components involved those are actually made the the earliest because we are we actually already started sampling for those so yeah so our, yeah. we are pretty far ahead in that aspect but but yeah the rule books are gonna take a while yeah yeah you don't you don't need to tell me how hard rule books take uh, how long rule books take to write <laughs> take yeah, a very remember, long time you remember our odyssey with cerebria right yeah yeah <laughs> um so yeah so my question is right so you bank the game it arrives in september next year You've played episode one, you've played episode two. What happens if you decide that you're not going to get episodes three and episodes four? Does the, Can you end the campaign at that point? Or yes, is it, yes, yes, you can, definitely. right, okay. Definitely, so the way we, uh, this is still a work in pro progress, but the way we want uh, the campaign mode uh, to look like in this campaign is that you can, you, you, you have a sort of midway conclusion in the campaign that right. you can uh, end it right there and then if you want. But you can also pick it up once you have episode three on your hands. Right, okay. So yeah, you can just play one and two and that provides some kind of conclusion, but if you want to get the others, you can you can continue on. Yes, like I said, okay. we are still working on it, so this is not an ironclad promise yet. No, no, no. no. But, but that's that's what we are we are working towards, yes. Yeah. And I, I think it's safe to say that neither of these two games are the one and done uh, type. So it, yeah. it's like you, you will, that they're, very exciting enough for you to to play them uh, a lot. I mean, we we st we are still not bored playing them, and we play them a lot. Believe yeah. me. So. <laughs> this is the thing, obviously, these days with there's a lot of narrative games coming out, and there is quite a few play one and done. You know, any uh, like time stories or any kind of game with a lot of narrative or mystery things you can't really replay them afterwards. So I guess you're always going to have a lot of these questions because you've called it episode one and two. You've called it that there's going to be a storyline. Obviously, the way you've described it sounds like there's things to unlock, but at the end of the day, this is just two Euro games that match very similar together. And, you know, it, it's the same thing. The, each one of these games is as replayable as Trakirian, Anachrony, you know, a, any other Euro game... The, these are replayable just as much as that. So if you're watching this and you think, oh, the, yeah, this is a story-based game that you can only play once, it's not. It is a Euro game, you can play it many times, but there is this thematic story connection between them. And yeah, no legacy components, so you're not going to write on anything, 
You're not going to rip anything up, no stickers or anything like that. So, cool. Um, episode three and four, are you going to release them together on a Kickstarter or are they going to be separate? No, we are going to release them together. Right, okay, cool. And do you have a price point yet for episodes one and two? Mm, well, prices are still fluctuating, so to say, until okay. the, the very launch of the campaign. So we'd right. rather not talk about that. But I, I think you won't be disappointed by the price, definitely. Okay, okay. Now, another thing that arrived in the box was some 3D printed miniatures. Am I allowed to show them? Of course you can. Right, okay. Well, let's let's put this back on and let's put this box here. So here's what arrived, and let's explain what we've got here. We've got some we got some big dinosaurs and we've got some little dinosaurs. I'll just zoom in a bit. So I've only got four of them. Does that mean that there's only going to be four included, or is this just a sample? <laughs> no, absolutely. They're just a sample. And actually, you're missing the tramplers. Are you sure you don't have uh, the uh, the third kind of dinosaur? The one you had in your hand is one of my favorite, at least yeah. for now. Uh, of course, we we kind of know how how most of the dinosaurs will look in episode three and four, but this one in your head is called mm -hmm. Shield Head, and and we the the, the it's because they they call it that way because uh, uh, how it, uh, it it has like a this kind of uh, thing on its head, which looks like a shield, and yeah. they're kind of going to use it as a one. That, so they, they're going to use it as a shield against other uh, kind of dinosaurs. Right. And it's it's a, like a huge one, but it's a herbivore, so it's not gonna eat you, but it's gonna going to trample in the ground if you're messing with it. So okay. <laughs> better be careful out there. And this the other one is... Uh, this is the one that only shows up in episode two. Right. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. And, and this is and just the one raptor. Yeah, we, we so what the way we call these dinosaurs are uh, that we, we we think we thought about how people would call them. So they this this one looks like a raptor. So people would call it a raptor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the trampler has the name because it tramplers trample it's a hard word to say. <laughs> Looks like we, we both struggle with it. Anyway, so tramplers trample the uh, settlements into the ground, so that's how uh, people yeah. call it. And Shieldhead has the name of, of Shield uh, they get from from the uh, uh, for, for from the uh, skeletons of these dinosaurs yeah. because in the wild you're gonna find some of the uh, skeletons as well. Okay. So how many miniatures are actually included in the game then? If these are just samples. 64. Oh, wow. Okay. And is that an add on extra or is that part of the yeah, game? That, that's 64 dinosaur miniatures, right? Richard is 64. Yes. And it, it's going to be a part of the deluxe edition right. and it's available as an add on uh, if, if you're interested in the standard edition uh, with miniatures. But mostly it's, it's for people who want to have like an extra set so they can paint them. Yes. Yeah. And also included in this little pack that you sent me is a pyramid. Yeah, well, it's yeah, it's it's more like a temple or an ancient temple. temple. Okay. And that's that's part of the mystery I've been talking about. So okay, we'll hide that then. For the first <laughs> first no, it's it's fine. It's fine to okay. show. It's not like a, a secret or something. Right. So uh, we. So the first mystery is how we got to the island, which is something you're not really going to know for a while. But the uh, this temple has the first hint uh, about that. Okay. Uh, that's all I can say for now. Okay. Um, and again, we've got these. Are these going to be in the different player colors then? No, not not all of them actually. The. Uh, the one, the red ones are the watchtowers. Okay. Uh, yeah. Those, yeah the, these kind of uh, resources were printed with the high quality uh, materials, so they can be player colored. Right. Uh, but the uh, dino miniatures were, so they 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 look very close to how they are going to look uh, in the end. But uh, the player colored pieces are not as high quality yeah. Uh, yeah. as you see. Uh, but the rest are going to be player colored. Yes. Right. Okay, cool. So that's just a bit so, of a sample uh, of... If, if, 
Okay, Victor, do you want to say some, anything about uh, why just, they're player colored so, or? So, yeah, so what you see there are uh, the green one on the bottom is, I think it's a wall, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, the, it, it has to, yeah. It, it's, it, so it's wall, the other. Walls, are, walls are essentially salvaged, like self, they are built of salvaged ship materials. That's, that's the aesthetic we wanted to capture here. Yeah. So that, that's what you're building in episode one against the dinosaurs. And then the rest of the stuff down uh, there, uh, the hexagonal tent, it's a camp. That's where you are going to launch your adventures from in episode two. And the square one, they are also tents or so, sort of like that. Uh, we call them settlements. And that's what you are building within the city to sort of increase the capacity and help settle the people down. And they're player colored because uh, the fact that you're building them also uh, bestows you some sub support in the as upcoming assembly and helps right. you gain that area's majority when the right. assembly happens. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, some people in the chat are saying that they saw the miniatures on BGG and they look great, uh, but they also saw some cardboard mini people. Are those the leaders? I think that was the soldiers that we saw earlier on. Yes, yes. Uh, you, yeah. you saw quite a bunch of soldiers, I think. Uh, those are cardboard materials, and yep. because there's so many of them, they will be cardboard materials in both uh, editions. Yeah. But then there are also the leaders, and your leader piece is something that you can uh, move around in the game. You can place it on the main board. You can even place it to defend against the dinos, uh, right. and it's a pretty powerful uh, piece in that aspect as well. And those will be available both as cardboard standees and as miniatures with right. the color base snaps. Yes. So yeah, that's, okay. that's the one thing that you haven't shown there because I don't think the prototype includes them. Nope. But yeah, no, they don't they, have them. They there will be the uh, miniature variations of the variants of the leaders as well. Yeah. Okay. Couple of other questions about the campaign just before we wrap things up. Um, if you are currently in the middle of a campaign yourself and then you want to play a separate game with some other friends, can you stop the campaign, play a game and then continue later? Absolutely, absolutely. You just right. ignore the campaign sheet and set up the, uh, the game as it's described in the rules and you are good to go. Right. And what happens if you're playing a four-player campaign and then one player can't make it but you will, the rest of you want to carry on playing? Can you switch from four players to three players in the middle of a campaign? Uh, currently not, but like I said, <laughs> the campaign is still a work in progress. So right, this, okay. This is something we, we might have to address at some point. Yeah, okay. Um, I think that is everything, and I think I've managed to catch up with most of the questions in the chat. So if anybody has any questions uh, for us, you have about uh, yeah two minutes to get the questions in. This is where we get a flood of new questions, and we're here for <laughs> another half an hour. Um, I'm not allowed to actually go downstairs at the moment anyway because Vicky's downstairs making my birthday cake for tomorrow. So, yeah. I, yeah I've got to... <laughs> before we wrap up, we definitely wanted to say happy, happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Con congratulations. Congratulations on making 27 years old. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, I, I was I was considering saying out loud how old you are, but then I realized maybe it's not appropriate. <laughs> I, 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 I think fine. enough people know about it that it's kind of, uh, I think I'm more scared about it than, <laughs> than everybody else is. Um, Bruce is saying, how challenging was it to integrate mechanisms into the theme of the game? So yeah, this goes go back. I think the theme of this game came first, didn't it? Well, not really. So we we oh, had really? like uh, the first game uh, the guys uh, Thomas, David, and Wolf uh, presented to us. Yeah. So we we had uh, a lot of things we we needed to take take into consideration when we uh, designed the theme. So first off, it it had to be like a society building game. Right. Uh, and even the first version of the game had some kind of adventure in it. Right. Um, we didn't have dinosaurs though so when they okay. came into the picture a lot had to change so even even uh, integrating that that the new theme into episode three was quite quite a big verb uh, for the for the guys and right. then we came up with this crazy idea <laughs> and we already told about uh, about the episodic concept and, and we already told a lot about how that turned out yeah. But, yeah. But, once, but, but once we were done with the initial integration part uh, of like sort of integrating the theme into episode three, then 
it all sort of it was building together the theme and the mechanism. So right. whenever we had a thematic idea, we we found found the mechanical implementation, and whenever we had a mechanical idea, we we nice. just didn't inter we, we just didn't implement it without finding proper thematic justification to it. Yeah. That's that's one of one of our our main principles when we are designing yeah. games. So yeah, and it, it's interesting because you know a lot a lot of people have their own opinions on theme versus mechanisms, and there are some people out there who will say that Anachrony, for example, is an extremely thematic game, and there will be other people who still like the game, who say that Anachrony has no theme and it's a purely mechanical game. Right. So even yeah. with people who like the game you'll find some people find a lot of theme there and some people find no theme there. And it kind of, what that's told me over the years is that part of it is down to the game, but also part of it is how you approach the game. If you want to play an acronym and you want to immerse yourself in the theme, it's there. If you just want to play it as moving pieces around and counting numbers, you can do just that. So Exactly. And that's yeah. the exact same, uh, same feedback we've been getting for Cerebria. So yeah. For some people, Cerebria is the most thematic game there is, and for some people, it's it's completely pasted on, and and there's yeah. no theme. Like yeah, like you yeah. said, if you want to immerse in the theme, then you can. If not, yeah, then it's a mechanical game. So yeah, yeah. And you can still I even play heard it. people say that to uh, to uh, Tricarion, which is really surprising to me because it it it. All that it has is theme, and there we really had theme first. Yeah. So yeah, everything yeah, yeah. we did in that game was building on the theme. So, <laughs> but yeah. still, it's it's just as you guys said, it's how you approach a game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's what's Jurassic Park is to Richard that's that's prestige to me. The prestige. Right. So yeah, I I we we did our absolute best to to get yeah. the feeling through. Yeah, well, you, def you definitely did. I need to go and watch that film again because it's excellent. Um, just, a, just a final question for me, and I want to take you back before Trickerian, before Mind Clash Games. Yes. What were you two doing? <laughs> I, I had a quite miserable job at a TV company. And, okay. And uh, I, I actually, uh, that was straight after the university. So I right. spent a couple of days working, a couple of years working there at Viacom. And uh, I, I was, by, by the way, I I have a degree of marketing, right. so so that's that's why we when we started working on to carry on, we quickly uh, switched to the mindset of actually doing a game that we can release to the market. So right. and okay. Richard, yeah, I met Richard at the university. So so right. I, he, and what yeah, were you doing, then, Richard? So we also had some projects at the university with Victor together, uh, so we did some stuff together already, and and we were friends before we started started this, and and are until today, which is great, and, yeah. and it's it's quite challenging if you're if you're building a business together, and and, and not just that, it's like when 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 you're involved in in such huge projects together it's it's really challenging to yeah. uh, have the professional life and and the friendship uh, on the other side and and i think we managed that which is great and and i'm very thankful uh, for it so i was working at the commercial agency on on mostly on uh, different creative projects i I did a lot of different things there, and so a lot of different companies, uh, mostly from the outside, but as it was like a joint, um, there, there were different companies uh, that I could work uh, in, and uh, I think those were very, very useful experiences for me. Uh, sometimes I feel it wasn't enough, now that we see how hard it is to build like an organization mm -hmm. that uh, needs to work on huge projects like this. Uh, but I, I definitely use a lot from what I learned there. And also uh, the creative part and, and also the management part. So I am very thankful for those years as well. Uh, although I would never go back yeah. To, yeah. to that life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think any so, of us would once we're, once we're in the games industry. So what were the games that influenced both of you to decide to, to, to make the decision of we're going to do this ourselves. Mm, well, I I got into Eurogame like I I think I had this 
typical arc of uh, playing uh, Catan and then playing Agricola yeah. and then playing all the heavy games that I, I can get. Right. I don't know. I, I think I, the Catan was the gateway game for me. Back, back then right. it was a huge deal. And I, I, I played the hell out of Agricola and I still love it to this day. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, and basically I, I love worker placement and Euro games were always have always been my genre, so Right. And what yeah, about for me you too. similar games? Uh, absolutely absolutely Euro games. So while in I'm not sure if I could say the right games that influenced me or us. I, I remember playing a lot of Puerto Rico back those days, but it's it's I wouldn't say it was a favorite or anything. We, I, I usually played with Victor a, a lot, so yeah. uh, and he, he was the one who brought the new games, and I was going along with it. Uh, and on my end, at first, it was mostly about a create the creativity and what I could yeah. that I could build something. And uh, and games were always very close to me, as as I mentioned, even even as a very a youngster, I was I was uh, drawn to uh, designing my own games. So yeah. I, I kind of lost that uh, uh, for a while, and and at the university we started playing these. Uh, I, I remember Cuba playing Cuba. I, I love that yeah. game. I love it until <laughs> today. So I, I still love Euro games mostly, and I, I I started to enjoy some of the uh, Emery style games, but. Mm -hmm. Well, most of them are really not for me. Right. Even though I, I, I really enjoy uh, thematic implementation and theme, mm, I also enjoy great manics and and this yeah. and and this is the and the interesting decisions and and uh, and, and all that. So yeah, well, thematic euros, you know that 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 gets a tick in my book. Okay, so that's that's the the former Mind Clash games. Now you mentioned earlier on that Perseverance has been being worked on for four years. Yeah, yeah, on and off, yes. So that must mean that you're working on games now for the next couple of years. Yes, we do. Are have... you able to tell us anything about what's in the future beyond this, mm -hmm. or not? Well, <laughs> we have we have one game. We've been working on for quite a while, uh, parallel with Perseverance, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not Transhumanity. Oh right, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm not. We, we are not ready to, to reveal okay. that just yet, but but well, it's coming. Okay. And, uh, and also at the same time, we haven't completely abandoned Transhumanity. We just we just had to put it on a bit of a back yeah. burner when yeah. we when we decided that Perseverance will indeed be a, an episodic game. Yeah. But 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 that's that's still in the pipeline. We really don't know when, but we will eventually release it. It's just uh, we don't want to rush it. We we normally don't want uh, rush game. Don't want to rush games and compromise their quality. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that's that has been part of our philosophy since the very beginning, and it's still part of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean I I have this experience with working with other publishers that, and I know they're working on games three or four years before they come out, but they don't say anything until about a year before. And to the outside public, they go, oh, they've just announced a new game. That was quick. They must have done that quickly. And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> they've been working on this, you know, for four years in the background before anybody even knew anything about it. So yeah, the design of some games, I mean, some people don't, don't get me wrong. Some people get lucky. Some people come up with the idea for a game. You know, I'm, not, I'm thinking a lightish game and we'll get it done, we'll get it tested. And it'll be produced and they might be able to do that within you know a year year and a half but the type of games you do the heavier more complex games yeah they they take a lot of work so yeah it's tough it, it, it's a, it, uh, especially because every uh, part of the of the process takes longer than with the with a less complex game the design the artwork the proofing, the rule writing, mm -hmm. play testing, developing, everything takes longer. And so the whole process is exponentially longer. And uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, it, we, we tried, we tried very hard to, to, to cut back on these lead times because who doesn't want to publish more games well, yeah. uh, in a shorter <laughs> time frame? But yeah. 
but we, we, we found out that as long as we are doing these games in the quality we would like to do them, we just can't. We, we, yeah. we, have, to, we have to be there. We have to... We have to give it time to mature to yeah. to, to be to be on the level we want them to. Yeah, um, yeah, them. yeah. Right. Final question in from Bruce. Then, how long did Tricarian take to go from initial concept to when it was actually on Kickstarter? Was that four years? Almost, actually. Almost. We, right. Yeah, but there we it was very different because when we started developing or designing the game, we were like amateurs. It was the first game. So we, we first we needed to learn how to design a game. Uh, and we did that by designing crappy games. So it was like, right. it didn't, <laughs> yeah. so we, we had to start from scratch uh, a lot of time. So we, we had the theme and we could use some of the ideas, but mostly, the, what we did in the first two years didn't really work out well. Mm -hmm. And there was one point when we realized, okay, if we really want to do this, then we just have to do this full time. Yeah. Maybe do something on the side to make a living, but we can't do our day jobs if we want to make this game work because it, it not, I mean, even, uh, even now, I think Tricarium was like a huge uh, design effort. It, it's it's not a small game, so yeah. it 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 didn't have like miniatures and and stuff. But still, it, it wasn't a, a, an easy design, and we had to we had to grow to this task. And it, I think it took like three years from scratch to go to Kickstarter. But we had like a year full time to prepare for that Kickstarter, yeah. and even after yeah. it, we we took our time to finish. Um, all the files and uh, make production, and that was a that was a much simpler production, um, right? And, uh, with a shorter reproduction for sure. Yeah, I mean the quality showed uh, in that because the Tricarian Kickstarter it, it looked amazing. Um, it was the first ever Kickstarter that I personally backed myself. So oh really? You know, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Very I, first I, wow. First wow. Ever. I mean, I I don't generally back a lot of games on Kickstarter. Um, obviously, now working in the industry, slightly different. But I remember when I think it was Philip from CGE that told me about it, and I looked at the Kickstarter and I was like, wow, the you know the the layout, the graphics, the artwork. These are new people. This is a new publisher. Wow, this just looks really impressive. So thank you for taking that time to make the game look as good as it did because for somebody like me who's very fussy, I don't just see, oh, it's a theme or it's got lots of miniatures. I'm looking at the gameplay, I'm looking at the detail, I'm looking at the amount of efforts that's gone into the, the graphic design and the iconography. That's what I'm looking at. Um, and that definitely, you definitely got my attention there. And then four years later, here we are now. So yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, we, need, we needed Wheeler to be able to do that for sure because she she jumped into this project with, with the same enthusiasm we did, and, and it's it's great to still have her with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, after all these years, the three of us are still in this together, and that's I think this still what's driving the whole thing. Yeah, basically. yeah. No, no. Keep keep doing what you do. It's all good. Uh, and thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much. It thank was, you. It was, we had a blast. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, cool. Right. So the thank next you. time we're going to speak... I, I will, yes. I'll be taking mostly a day off tomorrow. Now, we're going to be speaking again next week. Let's just remind everybody what's happening next week. This is happening on Thursday. No, Wednesday. Wednesday of next week and on Thursday. On Wednesday, we're playing episode one. Now, who's playing that with me? Or have we not quite decided yet? Mm, isn't that Thursday and Friday? I'm not. I. It might be Thursday uh, and Friday. I need to do. <laughs> I need to <laughs> double check. I need to double check as well. Yeah, but anyway, two days next week, either Wednesday and Thursday or Thursday and Friday. We can't quite remember which, but first of all, we're playing through episode one, and then we're going to be playing through episode two. So that's yes. going to come in to my channel next week. Uh, we're going to be doing a playthrough of both of episode one one night. And then the next night, we're going to be playing through episode two. Now, are we going to carry on from episode one to episode two in story mode, or are we just playing separate games? 
Uh, I think we are since since the story mode consists of two episodes, one games after one, one back to back. Okay. I think we should just show the the standalone standalone episode, episode two. Yeah. But but we we are go, we're gonna be more than happy to to talk about the the story mode as well. David yeah. will be joining us as well. Right. And and the story mode is mostly his work, so so okay. he, he's he's the best fit for that. So yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So watch this space. I will be announcing once we've agreed, once we've sorted out what dates we're doing. We have sorted out the dates. I've just forgotten what they are. So yeah, I'll I'll be announcing that on my channel probably on Monday, and I'll be putting the YouTube videos up so that you can you can set reminders, and that's happening next week. I'm also doing a solo playthrough of Anachrony next week as well. So basically, next week is Mind Clash Games. Um, <laughs> is what awesome. I'm going to be doing. So yeah, I'm going to be using the not the very very new. Chronobot, the one that's with fractures at a time, but I'm going to be using the the improved one. So yeah, that's going to be happening next week. Right then, uh, well I'm going to go downstairs and have a sneaky look at this birthday cake that's being made for me. I will let you two get back onto your your plans for this evening, and uh, yeah, just thank you very much again. Thank you very thank much. You. Thanks. Okay. For your Thanks everyone for joining Thanks. us. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you all soon. Cheers all. See you. Bye bye. <laughs>